in Deuteronomy chapter number 30 and verse number 9. I'm going to read from the Amplified Version. It says, And the Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in every work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, of your cattle, of your land for good. For the land will again delight in prospering you as he took delight in your fathers. I just want to speak a blessing over your life. I know in a time like this, it can be difficult to think in the things on the things that are positive. But I want to remind you that God is over you and that God is blessing you and that God is keeping you. And as he promised in this verse, when he was speaking to the Israelites. So it is to us as we are grafted into the family of God. And the Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in every work of your hand. Whatever you set your hand to do, I decree blessings and prosperity, abundance over your life, abundance over your family, your uh, property, your finances, your health. I just speak abundance over you. Believe in God that as he hovers over you, rejoices over you, sings over you, that he is going to continue to prosper you in the name of Jesus. In Nehemiah 8 and 10, it tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. God is rejoicing over you and your strength is found in his joy. I pray that you can grab a hold of it today, that you can focus in on it today, that you can get your mind tuned into his joy today and allow yourself to receive what he has for you. Uh, you can, again, choose how you're going to focus your mind. The, the platform or the, the array of options is before you. You pick which one you want to focus on. I'm encouraging you to focus on the abundant, prosperous blessings that God has promised to you. Uh, even in the book of Psalms, Psalm number 30 and verse number one says this. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. Praise be to God. The enemy can come in like a flood, but God is saying he has not let them triumph over us. He has not let the enemy overtake us. That's something to rejoice, and that's something to give God praise about. He said, I will lift you, pardon me, you have lifted me up. How many have been through something that you can say, God brought me through that thing. He lifted me up out of that thing. He didn't let the enemy triumph over me. No matter who he was using to try to come against me, no weapon formed against me shall prosper in the name of Jesus. He shall not overtake me because the Lord has lifted me up. Praise be to God. If you look at Psalm 41 and verse number 11, it says this. By this, I know that you favor and delight in me because my enemy does not triumph over me. Somebody ought to praise God right there. Ought to give God the praise that you are still here, that you are still triumphant, that you are still more than a conqueror, that the enemy has thrown the kitchen sink at you, but you took a licking and you kept ticking. You ought to be giving God some joy, some praise, some thanksgiving. You should be embracing the joy that he is offering you. In Isaiah 61 and 3, it says this. To grant consolation and joy to those who mourn in Zion, to give them an ornament, a garland, or diadem of beauty instead of ashes, ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment expressive of praise instead of heavy burden and failing a heavy burden and failing spirit that they may be called oaks of righteousness what is god saying 
I'll take away the spirit of heaviness, the, the burden, the, the yoke of the oppression of the enemy, and I will give you the oil of gladness. Somebody might need to ask him today. Holy Ghost, fill me with the oil. Pour, smear me with the oil of gladness. Let me rejoice in you today so that I can embrace all that you have for me. He's saying, I will swap out. I'll take your mourning. I'll take your heaviness and I'll give you the oil of gladness. I'll give you the joy that is mine in the name of Jesus. Amen. Look at Jeremiah 15 and 16. All of these are taken from the word of the day. If you didn't read the word of the day today, can I encourage you? Go on to whosoeverbelieves.org each day and check it out. God has allowed me to be able to encourage through his word his people. So I invite you to be a part of what he's doing. Jeremiah 15 and verse 16 says, Your words were food and I ate them. And your words were to me a joy and the rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. If you get a morsel, just a oint of his word, what the word is saying is it's like joy. It's, it's food for my soul and it brings joy to my heart. This word will encourage and build you up if you feast on it. There's so many blessings in the word of God, but it's up to us to partake. He won't force feed us. He won't stuff it in our mouths. You know, when we were kids, our parents were trying to make us eat. God has invited us to his banquet table. He's encouraged us, but he won't force us. It's up to us. If a man don't work, the word of God say he don't eat. If you don't take the time to get in his word, then spiritually you're starving, waiting for somebody else to feed you. Zephaniah 3.17 says, the Lord your God is in the midst of you. Can you feel his presence? A mighty God. He's El Shaddai. A savior. He is the one who saves you. Your soul's salvation is based in him he will rejoice over you with joy he will rest in silent satisfaction and in his love he will be silent and make no mention of past sins or even recall them he will exalt over you with singing i just encourage you if you feel any heaviness and anxiety just take a moment and just think about the lord hovering over you singing in gladness that's enough to rest in him right there. If you just remember, he is omnipresent every place, every day, every time of day. There's no way you can go to escape his very presence and his spirit. God is hovering over you with joy. He is hovering over you singing. He is crazy about you. So rest in his love today. Don't let the enemy steal your joy in the name of Jesus. And as we go before the Lord our God, we can go with the assurance that guess what? He wants to hear our cry. His ears are attentive to our prayers. So be encouraged today, wherever you are. I want you to be encouraged and know that God is with you. Let's pray. Father, we bless you right now. We praise you right now. We honor you right now. We thank you that you are with us, that there is never a place that we're alone, never a place where we're forsaken, never a place where we're abandoned. We thank you, God, for loving on us and keeping us and making provision for us, hovering over us with joy and love, singing over us, God. We just can't even embrace all of that and not feel your presence and your joy. Lord, I pray your blessings over your people today. Be with them as they ing counter the world's order and all the chaos. Remind us all, God, that you are with us. I lift every heart, every burden, every circumstance, every situation. God, you know all of the cries of your people. You know all the things that they're crying out to you for right now. I pray even now, holy God, that your people who you said, as we are called by your name, that when we humble ourselves and pray, 
and turn from our wicked ways, you would hear us and heal our land. I'm trusting and believing, God, that you are indeed healing us as we are crying out to you as your people. We have turned from all that is not of you as best we know how, God. Help us where we are stuck in our sin in any area, stuck in any kind of stronghold. Loose us from the enemy's grip, O King. I pray for our families today, all the families represented on our prayer line. I pray that you bless us and keep us and strengthen us. I lift up the people of Ukraine today, every child, every parent, every father, every mother, every son, every daughter. I plead the blood of Jesus over their lives, over their country. Oh, God. God, that you would war on their behalf, that you would raise up, Lord, that armies of God to fight for them that have been mistreated, that have been attacked ungodly, uh, in any ungodly way, God, and any unrighteousness, God. I pray that you come against it in the name of Jesus. I pray for every name that's written in your book, every person that names the name of Jesus. God, that you would be a hedge of protection. You said you would give your angels charge over us. Give your angels charge over them. Keep them in all their ways. Even now, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. I lift up our president and Kamala Harris. I pray your hedge of protection around them. I pray wisdom and guidance as they make decisions, Lord, that you would lead them in the name of Jesus. I lift up Angela also, Bruce, as you would grant her wisdom as she is maneuvering and and directing us through this season of transition. Give her wisdom to know what she would have us to do and how you would have us to uh, follow her, oh God. Give her whatever direction you would have us to take so that we can all stay safe. I pray and I thank you for the lifting of the veil, Lord God, even as the COVID restrictions are being lifted. We know it's your mercy and your grace that sustained us thus far. And we're praying, Father, for all the governors and mayors and council people and elected officials and appointed officials all over the globe as they're making transition and making wise choices. God, you be their strength. You be their guides, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, God, for continuing to heal our land, continue to bless us, continue to be with us, oh God. I praise you and I thank you. I ask you, Lord, even now to breathe on this whosoever believes in 316 and God get the glory out of it all that you have ordained for it to be let it be so God draw by your spirit those who need to hear and those who are far from you God that they will come to know you for themselves is my prayer use us as your instruments O king and let your name be praised we ask all of this in the mighty name of Jesus father amen and amen and amen hallelujah Amen and amen. I want to invite you, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, to give him your heart today. There is a time and a season for everything. I have the uh, privilege of preaching a homegrown service, a eulogy, for a man who's 99 years old. He went through a lot. He was on two battleships that got sunk, but God he was in all kinds of circumstances over those 99 years. He went from buggies to seeing a spaceship go in the, into the sky and come back, seeing a space station. He saw a lot in his lifetime in those 99 years, and God kept him. As I thought about that thing, I said, God, what an amazing journey he must have had. And I'm told he was really intelligent and very astute, astute brother, and, and astute, uh, uh, aware of all that's going on. And the point I'm making is one of the things he would say when people would ask him, well, what's the key to longevity? He said, either you got it or you don't. God has appointed a time for each of us. There's a time to be born and a time to die. And when that day comes, will you be ready? Will you be ready? There's no guarantee. I heard about another lady who was in her 50s. She loved the Lord. She led many to know Christ. And she said, well, once I finish what God has called me to do, it doesn't matter how old I am. It's time for me to go. And she took her transition. You don't know the day or the hour. Only God knows. But will you be ready? That's the key question. If you had to face the Lord today, 
what would happen? Because it is appointed for man once to die and then face judgment. Are you ready? If you don't know Jesus as your savior, you're not ready because you will bust hell wide open. Can I just make it plain? But if you have accepted Jesus, you will spend your eternity with him. And that's a good news. I invite you now to accept him as your savior, because when you do, he will forgive you of every one of your sins. That's what qualifies you to spend your eternity in heaven. Jesus paid the penalty for your sins when he died on the cross. If you would like to accept him, I'm going to pray a simple prayer that you can repeat after me and he will save your soul. If you need to rededicate your life or if you're just not sure, you can pray this prayer as well. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you died for every one of my sins. I believe you are buried and God has raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. Take control of my life. I repent of my sins and I'm turning to you. Thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for saving my soul. Amen and amen and amen. If you prayed that simple prayer, that means you're born again. You're a child of God. You believed it in your heart, confessed it in your mouth. He said you're saved. All you now have to do is grow your little self up in him. <laughs> I really allow him to grow you up. What does that mean? Get in a word teaching church where you can grow and learn of God and learn who you are in him and be all that God created you to be. First Baptist Church of Glen Arden is a great place. First Baptist Church of Glen Arden International, I should say, is a great place. It's a place where you can learn who you are in Christ and you can learn about him and you can prosper in your faith. I want you to check it out. FBCGlenArden.org. Anywhere in the world, you can become a part of our ministry. We would love to have you. I want you to write me and let me know you prayed this prayer. Rev Letty Carr at whosoeverbelieves.org. R E V L E T T I E C A R R at whosoeverbelieves, all one word, dot O R G. And I'll be glad to correspond with you and encourage you in the things of God. Just celebrate what God is doing in your life. I believe he's going to do some phenomenal things because that's the kind of God we serve. Lastly, check out our website whosoeverbelieves.org. If you look on there, hit that button that says join the conversation. You can become a part of a growing network of people that are fellowshipping, that are sharing, that are posting, commenting, just like on any other social networking platform. The only difference is we do try to encourage you in the things of God. We do try to encourage you by sharing positive things so that you can grow in your faith. 